All right, that will do. Hello, YouTube. It's Will uh, coming to you from willsvoice.com, where it's been about, uh, I don't know, eight months, 10 months since my last workflow tutorial. And I thought I would just give you a refresher on what I've been working on lately and the evolution of my voiceover process. So I've just recorded a little script. Um, I wouldn't say it's my best performance ever, but it's good enough for me to sort of demonstrate my process. Uh, what do I want to show you first? Well, you see I'm using a new theme. This is Reaper still. I'm using a theme called Black Swan Analog Version 2. And I'm going to provide a link in YouTube on the comments to that, um, to that theme, which I really, I really like. One thing I like about it is that it shows me a meter for my uh, microphone in the booth. I can click on this value and see that minus 47 or so is my noise floor, which I think is halfway decent. If I snap my fingers, we see that's minus 13, 10 feet away, my snapping fingers. Anyway, so that's cool. The other thing I wanna show you has to do with some uh, changes to the way I apply effects in my projects. And um, so I'll take you through a tour of that as well. And then finally, I'll show you sort of how fast I can get through my process in order to really streamline the, uh, the work that I'm doing here. So where to begin? Let me begin by showing you a little bit of behind the scenes stuff. This isn't stuff that you would see as I'm doing my work, but stuff that you should sort of know is there. So I've got two phases of effects going on here. Right now they're both bypassed. This phase, phase one, is the one that is more computationally expensive, if you will. The dialogue denoiser from Isotope RX4 and the declicker also from Isotope RX4. The declicker in particular, I use it to take out the random mouth noises and clicks uh, as I do my recording. Um, it's, it's no substitute for proper technique, but it can help a little bit. But it adds a ton of latency and it's a set and forget kind of thing. I never adjust this. I never adjust this. So what I end up doing is say, look, just apply it. Once you've got a take that is edited more or less okay, I push a magic button that uh, sort of freezes this track and allows me to put the finishing touches on the recording with an additional stack, which involves breath control from the same company, Isotope, and then Nectar 2, also from the same company, which I really like. We'll get into that in a second. But the first step is to edit this mess. And you see I've got many takes, many mistakes. I said in a prior... Um, video that when I make a mistake while I'm recording, I make this noise. And that's how I can easily see when I've made a mistake. And what we have here is a plane went by. So I paused for a little while and then I sighed heavily. <laughs> and um, but here is the actual recording that I want. So I know that I don't need any of this stuff. Have I showed you this before? When I hover my mouse over a piece that I want to delete, I move my mouse over it and I press this delete key on my Shuttle Contour 2 Pro, it shows up red so that I can see what's about to get deleted and it goes away. So I can do the same thing here. I click on the bottom half of the item, move my mouse to the part I wanna kill, press the button and it's gone. Zoom in a little bit and let's just kinda tidy this up and see what we have. A genuine, not so bad, but behind, here's a little click which I can see. I use Shift Up a few times so that I can really see these peaks. Get rid of that. The further I turn the shuttle on my little contour, the more it zooms out. And then I have another button for zooming in. That's a little noisy. We get rid of that. What about the timing? I am going to guess that I want the timing to be like this. It came to light. Big four. Maybe even a little more I can take out. We'll tweak that later. Looking for imperfections, edits, mistakes. There's a mistake. What's this? The crime. So we cut here. Maybe move this cut a little closer to here because I don't want that little thing. Where do I say the crime? The crime, right? So it's right here. Get rid of that, and that mistake is gone. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And this is the beginning of the recording. In 19, I'll keep the breath for purposes of discussion. We get rid of this, and that's it. I want the recording to start at about a half a second. In 19, in, all right, we'll take, we'll take it. So now I have this button that I push uh, on my contour that gives that that presses an F keystroke. And what the F keystroke does, I call it phase one. It does a whole bunch of stuff. Let's walk through it. 
first of all, it disarms all tracks for recording. It turns on the effects stack on the track that I've got selected. And then it uses the Reaper freeze to mono, render prefader, save and remove items and online effects. What this does is it renders the effects in this effects stack. And I mentioned earlier that the latency contributed by, in particular, the declicker, then it just goes away. Since it's set and forget, I just want to apply it and forget about it, and then I can work about the worry about the actual effect. So we freeze, then we select the item that gets produced as a result. We unlock it because that's what freeze does is it locks it. Then I normalize this item, which I've now glued together. I now have one big recording that encompasses all the edits I've made, and I want to normalize that overall recording to minus 20 dB. Which, uh, which is a suggestion that I got from a friend online, which I really believe in. Um, this is not peak, this is the entire item. It measures the RMS value of the, um, of the volume level across the whole item and normalizes it to minus 20 dB. It's gonna have peaks that go over zero dB, but in Reaper that's okay. We'll finish it and make sure it's normalized properly in the next step. Then I select the track, turn on the uh, effect stack for my deliverable track as opposed to my recording track. Then I make visible breath control and Nectar 2 so that I can make any final tweaks. All of this stuff is accomplished by pressing one button on my Shuttle Contour Pro. And it takes another 10 seconds. This is the part that takes a lot of time. So I maybe just have a sip of coffee. You should not drink coffee while you're recording, by the way. The, uh, the peaks now look too high, so I shift down a couple of times so that I can see what I'm looking at. And I've, I've activated the effects for uh, track one, which is the processed version of the thing that I just rendered here. And let's have a listen. Even Big Fork's Dark Side. The ruthless murder of a well-known resident stunned the town. Now, let me walk through each of the modules in Isotope Nectar 2, starting with EQ. High pass filter, just so that the big bumps and crashes uh, aren't heard. I like a resonant uh, high pass filter that just gives me a little bit of a boost on the very, very low end. You tell me if that's dumb. Uh, probably you can't hear the difference. Another thing you probably can't hear uh, is a little bit of cutout in the 210, 220 range. I I think my voice sounds a little better if I just pull a little bit of that out. But I'm also shooting for no EQ at all. I, the, the less EQ I have on my on my voice, I think the cleaner will be my deliverable. Some people like to boost the uh, the highs a little bit. I don't find it necessary to do that. So that's EQ. Next phase is, is the compressor. I've got it set at a ratio of around two and a half to one. I used to use the optical compressor. Now I'm using the digital one because the optical one has a ratio that's hard pegged at four to one. I've got the attack set to four. Some people like a little faster attack. Some people like a little slower attack. That's where I am. I have a release of 50 milliseconds. Uh, some recommendations take the release all the way down to like 12 milliseconds. Dark side. Frankly, it's really hard for me to hear um, the audio difference between these minute changes to attack and release. Over the Threshold, though, you can really hear the difference if I overcompress. Facts about who was behind the killing came to light. Big Fork, Montana, an isolated outpost on the shore of Flathead Lake. We don't want that, right? A rustic village whose shutters are. What I want, what sounds good to me, real estate boom is a level of compression where I just sort of visually see that I'm attenuating by no more than around 10 dB as I make my way through. So that boosts the, the gentle stuff um, and it limits the heavy stuff and that may be a little too much. Then when I'm happy with that, uh, maybe I should return to the gate. I've got a real problem as far as the interaction between my gate, which is also known as an expander, and Big breath control. We'll, we'll return to that in a minute. Outpost on the shore of Flathead. Deesser. I was not using the deesser, and I am again. I don't want to overdo it because if you overdo it, you end up making your s sounds sound like th sounds. A genuine sort of place found only in the mountain west. Right. So that's too much. In 1997, it was hard not to believe in Big Fork's dark side. The ruthless murder of a well-known resident stunned the town. The crime loomed over this base. It doesn't need too much. And then the limiter is to take the sound that's coming out of the compressor and the, and the gate and the de-esser, and this is the final step. And my goal here, here's again how it sounds if you overdo it. continuously rattled by an ongoing real estate boom. 
but behind the for sale signs and storybook facades. Kind of sounds like 98.1 FM, right? Just way over dialed. Sort of place. My goal with the compressor West is for the overall volume to be as loud as it can be. 1997. But I really want the compressor to do the hard work of leveling things out, and I don't want to get much out of the limiter for that purpose. I just want the limiter to grab the occasional peak over this and smooth out those occasional peaks so as to give me the loudest thing I can without being overly uh, aggressive in processing the sound. And, and so that's the kind of thing I'm looking for. Maybe just a shade less. A rustic village whose nope, shutters are less continuously than rattled by an ongoing... Now, if I had better microphone technique, this part here, a rustic village wouldn't have been over overly driven compared with the rest of it. So maybe what I do is I take this part and this part and just dial it back by a half a dB. Flathead Lake. A rustic village whose shutters are continuously... And maybe not. I don't think it's necessary, but every now and then you have to do that. Behind the for sale signs and storybook facade exists the old Big Fork. And that's about it. So I'm going to take one more pass through it just to see if I like it. Mountain West. Uh, but you know, there is one other thing that I meant to show you, which is the ability to use Reaper's take system. I'm using this much more often than I used to. Let's pick a phrase that I feel like needs to be better. How about this one? Found only in the... Or this one. A genuine sort of place found only in the mountain west. You know, if this was a commercial, this would be the slogan or the tagline, and I might want to get that just right. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to unfreeze the this track, which is going to undo, in particular, it's going to undo this edit and change I made here. And if I make another change, like, oh, let's take this phrase and delete it, then I go back and unfreeze this track. It restores it to everything it was before I pressed my magic button. So let's get back to my original recording after I've made the edit, so I, I still have the fixes of my mistakes, but I want to fix this final portion. A genuine sort of place found only in the mountain west. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of this. I'm going to turn off all my effects so that my CPU can relax a little bit. And then I have a button on my contour that says disarm track one, arm track two, record track two. And I'm going to press that button, go into the booth, record this phrase a few times. A genuine sort of place. Oh, and also let's solo this track so that I don't hear the original. Here we go. <clears throat> so three sort of alternative reads. Probably the first one is not the one we're going to use. And you're looking at this and you're saying to yourself, what is going on? Did he make a mistake? No. Here's what is going on. We hit stop and now it's taken all of that recording and basically striped it across this thing. And if I were to zoom in a little bit, we can see there's, well, first of all, I had my cursor here, which was sort of a mistake. So I am going to delete that portion. And this is all gonna start making sense in a minute. Basically take that entire recording that I made and just imagine it goes across this row, across this row, across this row. And so you can see me shuffling into the booth Shuffling into the booth, what's going on here? I'm going to use option and slide this over. This is not something I need to keep, I'm sure. Right? I'm just saying, mm -hmm, I'm singing into my microphone. So these takes are no good. I've got this set to control D, but what you do is you say take, delete, active take. So I hit control D, get rid of that one, get rid of that one, get rid of that one, get rid of that one. Here's, here's one. Now I option, slide, option, slide and i made three takes and then this is me leaving the booth so i can get rid of these one and two and three and four all right now i have the three takes to choose from and maybe i slide them over just a bit more and so they're all just right and then i take this whole thing and i move it around here and let's just listen to them see how they sound found only in the mountain west <laughs> probably not going to use that right place found only in the mountain west a genuine sort of place found only in the mountain west. A genuine sort of place found only in the mountain west. A genuine sort of place found only in the mountain west. And since it's a documentary, and since I've seen some really strong advice about documentary, the voiceover guy is not the star. So we're not gonna use this one. Only in the mountain west. Blah, we're barfing into the microphone. You and sort of place found only. I just wanna sit in the background. This is the one I want. So I'll just take this thing, plop it in right around there, Pick this one and we're done. This is dimmed because this is soloed. So let's unsolo that and just see how it sounds. It exists the old Big Fork, a genuine sort of place found only in the Mountain West. 
And that's it. Then I press my magic button again to go through that whole phase one of processing. And the last thing I want to talk about once this is done in five seconds is the competition that's going on between my gait and my breath control. This is something I haven't really figured out yet. Let's see if we can hear it, the problem that I'm talking about. So we select this, we go over to here, and let's listen to this breath and see if we like it, okay? The crime loom town. The crime loom town. The crime loom town. Now I'm okay with this one. What we're seeing in the gate is that it's taking its sweet time, 13 milliseconds, to notice my breath, allow the breath to be heard. It starts to go down again, but then I start talking and off we go. The crime loom town. The crime. The breath is a bit abrupt. You might think that the breath is a bit abrupt and you'd be right. Loom town. The crime. <clears throat> I don't love it. I don't love it. But I don't totally hate it either. Let's listen to this one. In 19... Oops. <laughs> Big Fork Montelite. Big Fork Montelite. Big Fork Montelite. Big Fork Behind the Killing came to light. Big Fork Mont Behind the Killing came to light. This one I like. What's going on? The phrase ends... Here's a mistake that the breath control module is making. It thinks the end of this phrase is a little bit of breath and it's knocking it down a bit. Let's listen and see what we hear. The killing came to light. The, the T sound and came to light is being attenuated a little bit. It bugs me a little. It doesn't bug me a lot. But who was behind the killing came to light. Big four. Now, the next thing that's happening is that the breath control module notices this breath. And I'm saying, if you notice a breath, make sure it does not exceed 33, minus 33 dB, which it does. The gate is saying anything lower than, let's see what's going on here. Minus 33 is uh, louder than minus 37, right? So the breath is louder than the gate's threshold. Therefore, the sound coming from the breath control module into the gate, the gate says, yep, we're going to allow that. And the gate does it fast enough so that we get to hear the whole breath and the gate doesn't start to kick in again until after the breath is done. So it sounds like a pretty okay breath to me. Behind the killing came to light. Big fork mon behind the kill. That's what I want. That's how I want the gate and the breath control to work together. Assuming I don't do all this manually. So if it's something this short, I'm probably gonna take one, two, three, four breaths and just fix them manually. But if this is an audio book, might be able to save some time by not having to do that. How's this one sound? Uh, this one right here. This one's probably not going to get touched by either. Uh, it's probably not going to get touched by this because it's a nice gentle breath. Let's see what it sounds like. Flathead Lake. A rustic. So again, the K in lake. Breath control's grabbing it. Not sure I'm crazy about that. I might have to turn this off. But it didn't notice the breath because it wasn't louder than minus 33. And what is the gate doing? The gate is kind of messy here. Let's see if we hear it. Head lake. A rust yes, we do. I'll play it again so you can listen for it. But what you're hearing is gentle breath, and then it's abruptly getting louder. The reason is the breathing starts here, the gate notices the breath, and the gate steps out of the way to allow the breath to come through with the effect that the breath starts out soft and gets loud. I am not okay with that. Flathead lake. A rustic of flathead lake. A rustic of Flathead Lake. A... What would I do in this case? I would reconsider whether I want a gate in the first place. I would reconsider whether I should be using a, a breath control app as opposed to proper breathing technique and actual editing, or some combination of all of those. In this case, you know, I talked earlier about the fact that I've got monitoring that showed me earlier that you know my my noise floor was around minus 40 dB. What is my noise floor after processing? Minus 60 with the gate. Minus 46 without the gate. What do I need a gate for? I don't know. You tell me, please. Okay, in the comments. Related outpost on the shore of Flathead Lake. 
a rustic back. village whose shutters are continuously rattled by an ongoing real estate boom. But behind the for sale signs and storybook facade. So I'm going to turn off the gate because I don't need it. You tell me if I'm wrong. Storybook facade exists. The old. And then I'm going to finish editing this thing and get it done and wrap up this video. Old Big Fork, a genuine sort of place found only in the Mountain West. In 1997, it was hard not to believe in Big Fork's dark side. The ruthless murder of a well-known resident stunned the town. The crime loomed over this bayside village for months as the astonishing facts about who was behind the killing came to light. Big Fork, Montana an isolated outpost on the shore of Flathead Lake, a rustic village whose shutters are continuously rattled by an ongoing real estate boom. But behind the for sale signs and storybook facade exists the old Big Fork. A Did you hear the click? I heard some other clicks that I'm not gonna address, but I am gonna address this one. If I, here's a little quick trick. If I just click on the, on the lower half to make an edit, it's gonna do a fade on either side of that. And really what that does is erase the click, which is kind of handy. It's the old. Let's do it again. Let's listen real close. This is the old Big Fork. That click is gone. A genuine sort of place found only in the Mountain West. Now, as I say, I heard some other uh, clicks as well that I could conceivably go into Isotope uh, RX4 to edit, but I'm not going to do that. For, for recording this short, if the clicks were bad enough that I was like, nah, I'm not sure I can deliver that, I would just record it again without a cup of coffee in front of me and a green apple, right? But for purposes of this demo, I think we're done. Uh, I appreciate you sticking with me. I wonder what your comments are. I'd love to hear your suggestions about this workflow and process. And if you have any questions, I will try to answer those as well. So meanwhile, if you need to hire me for your voiceover project, check me out, www.willsvoice.com. And take care. And we'll talk to you all later.